All right, all right, right. So let's proceed with our quizament number two for accounting for business combination. Uh, topic business combination part two. So uh, basically, direct na tayo sa problem solving. Kaya madali na lang tong ano, itong true or false na to, di ba? Given naman dito. So no sweat na yun sa inyo, di ba? Oh, ang problem 2, true or false rin, madali rin, and mostly solving to sila eh. Yeah? Oh, itong mga additional ano, information, etc., etc. Diba? Okay, goods na yan. Let's proceed to the problem solving, problem for exercises. Mag-exercise tayo. Number 1. So, ha? Sipa. So, uh, Entity A and Entity B exchange equity interest resulting to Entity A obtaining control over Entity B. So, relevant information follow. So, ito, klarong-klaro, ang ginamit na pambayad ni Entity A being the acquirer kay Entity B is yung kanyang shares mismo. Kaya nagkaroon ng exchange in equity interest. Shares yung kanyang, kanyang pinambayad. So, ito yung relevant information. Si ABC ko, before the combination, si Entity A yan, before niya kinain si Entity B, So, itong identifiable asset, wala pang goodwill, liability, share, share premium, retain earnings, total liability sa equity. Ngayon, nung kinombine na, nung kinain na ni Entity A, si Entity B, yun, combine Entity na sila, yung identifiable assets, 3.6, goodwill, wala. So, liabilities, one, tumaas from 700, nung nakombine na, naging 1.3. Kita nyo rin dito yung share capital, 800, 976, share premium, 1092, retained earnings, 400. Wala. So, ang, pin, ang tanong, uh, requirements compute for the following, number of shares issued by Entity A and yung goodwill. So, klarong-klaro. As you can see, number of shares that was issued by Entity A, kung saan yung shares na in-issue niya yung ginamit niyang pambaya, di ba? Klarong-klaro. So, with that, as you can see here, yung before combination, yung shares was 800,000 at 20 par. Noong nag-combine na, naging 976. So, from that, makikita nyo na, ah, okay, so... Nung nag-issue kasi si Entity A ng shares, diba? So, nung kinombine na, nung kinain niya na si Entity B, simple, nag-issue siya ng shares as pambayad, naging, pam, pam 800, naging 976 yung value ng kanyang share capital. So, pam, that makikita mo na, diba? Logical. Ah, okay. So, ito yung, ano, yung difference nito. Yan yung naging pambayad ni Entity A kay Entity B, sa owners na Entity B, using sharing uh, the, the shares issued. So, with that, okay, ganito lang yan. 800 minus 976, yung increase, 176,000. O, divided by, by, by 20 per par value, di ba? So, 8,800 yung shares. So, 8,800 yung shares na in-issue. No, sweet. Yeah, madali. Chill. Diba? Yan. So, si entity, yung requirement B naman, yung goodwill. So, yung goodwill, And may requirements si rin to. Nandito lang yun siya. Retained earnings of the combined entity immediately after the business combination. Yan yung uh, requirements. Tatlong requirements tayo meron. Tatlong requirements. So, yun. So, saan? Balik tayo dun. So, yun. Ang next requirement, goodwill daw. So, yun. Alam nyo naman yung goodwill. Yeah? Uh, same formula na ginagamit ni Zeus, or you can also use yung pinakita ko sa inyo yung ginagamit namin dati. Yeah? Yung tatlong columns, tatlong tables. Tatlo ba yun? Four columns, four, four rows. Yeah? So, yun. Ang consideration transferred, paano malalaman? <coughs> Alam mo nang 8,800 uh, yung shares na in-issue. Diba? 8,800. Kaso hindi mo maalam kung magkano yung fair value na ginamit, di ba? Pero pinakita dito yung naging increase. Di ba? From 800, naging 976. And, alam mo, yung share premium, di ba? May kasama yung share premium. From 300, naging 1,092. So, yun. Di ba? Add mo sila, 1.1. Total ng share capital, share premium sa combined entity, 976 and 1,092. Yung difference sila. As you can see, nagkaroon ng increase of 968,000. So, yun, yun, you can now infer na, okay, yan yung ginamit na pambayad. 968,000. Yan yung consideration transferred ng shares. Diba? So, yun, consideration transferred, 968. Wala tayong NCI, wala tayong previously held. 
So, yun, total fair value of net identifiable assets acquired. Uh, dito yun sa As you can see, same rin yung logic, same rin yung follow nyo dito. Identifiable asset before combination 2.2. Nung nag-combine 3.6 na, so nagkaroon ng increase of 1.4. Sa liability, same rin, 700 before combination, 1.3. Nung nag-combine na, nagkaroon ng increase of 600. So, anong logic mo dyan? Anong reasoning mo dyan? Di ba? Saan ang galing ang 1.4 increase? Saan ang galing ang 600 increase? Eh, di kay Entity B yan galing, yeah? nung kinain ni Entity A, nung inacquire ni Entity A si Entity B. Siyempre, mag-increase yan. So, itong 1.4, itong sa identifiable assets, eh, yung 600 sa liabilities, you can infer na, okay, galing yan kay Entity B. So, yun, for value of net identifiable assets acquired, di ba? net 800, so yan. So, goodwill 168. Yun, may goodwill ka na, 168. Ngayon naman, ang requirements for C is that anong retained earnings, di ba? Anong retained earnings dito nakalagay? So paano yung masosolve? Eh di add mo lang siya no, di ba? 3.6 plus yung goodwill 168. Okay, ito na natin. 3.6 plus 168, yun, 3.768 dito, di ba? 3.768 yung total assets. Eh alam mo naman kung anong total assets dito, yun yung total liabilities and equity. So lagay mo si 3.768 dito, okay, work back. So minus mo sa 1.3 Sa 976, sa 1092, okay, 400 dito. O, matik. So, 400. No sweat. Let's proceed to number 2. So, number 2. Uh, okay. So, ano kay number 2? So, tanong number 2. On situation, on January 1, 2000X1, si Roco acquired 10,000 out of the 100,000 outstanding shares of both co. For 30,000. Ngayon, si Roco, nung in-acquire niya yan, di ba yung 10,000, classified the shares as financial asset measured at fair value through profit or loss. So, that is IFRS 9 or PFRS 9 dito sa atin. Huwag niyong kalimutan yan. So, with that, since financial asset measured at fair value through profit or loss, the shares were trading at 5 pesos on December 31, 2001. So, alam mo nang, ang ano nyan, value nyan, as of December 31, 2001, is 5 pesos times 10. So, 50,000 na by that time. Kahit na nakawar niya for 30,000. So, next paragraph, on July 1, Roco acquired additional 80,000 shares of both co. So, alam mo nang nangyari yan. Nagkaroon ng step acquisition. So, magkakaroon ng previously held interest. Yeah? Kung saan, akuha niya yung 80K at 8, pers at 8, pers 8 pesos per share, which is the quoted price on that date. So, alam yan yung gagamitin mo. Now, that standing shares of both co remained at 100,000. So, ano nangyari dyan? Una, 10,000. Then, nag-acquire siya ng additional 80,000. So, ang total ang pagmamayari niya sa shares ni both co, si Roco, Ang total na pagmamayari niya, ownership niya sa shares ni Boatco is 90,000 shares na out of the 100,000. So, that is 90%. So, Boatco's net identifiable assets have a fair value of 665. Okay, binigyan na yung FBNA natin. So, Roco elected to measure the NCI at proportionate shares. So, times mo lang sa percentage ng NCI. Yeah. So, requirements, compute for goodwill and provide for the journal entry. So, yun. Basic. Madali na lang. So, okay, goodwill. Consideration transferred. 80,000 given naman. Pla times the 8, per 8 pesos, which is the quoted price on that date. So, yun yung fair value at that date. So, that is 640,000. Ngayon. Ay, wala naman akong nag-google. Ba't ito nag-activate? So, yung NCI natin, yeah, proportionate share daw. May NCI tayo dito kasi 90% lang yung acquisition. Yeah, 90% lang yung acquisition. So, may natitilang 10%. So, 665 times 10% kasi nga, proportionate share, 66,500. Ngayon, mayroon tayong previously held equity interest in the acquiry. Kasi before na-acquire yung 80,000 additional shares, may 10,000 na siyang. pagmamayari kaya naging 90,000 na 90, at 100 yung kanyang ownership kay both ko. So with that kailangan mong hanapin yung previously held equity interest ni acquiry, hanapin mo yung kanyang fair value. Ha? hanapin mo yung kanyang fair value. 
So in this case, as you can see, noong July 1, 2002, ang quoted price ng mga shares is 8 pesos per share. Yeah? So, and with that, 10,000 yung kanyang previously held equity interest. So, with that, oh, 10,000 times 8 lang. So, yun. Fair value ng previously held equity, equity, equity interest. So, yung total is 7 Eight six five hundred minus mo na sa FVNA given naman so yung good release niya one two one five hundred one two one five hundred so let's go to requirement B provide the journal entries so sa journal entries ah uh, kaya nagacquire July on July may specific date on July one two thousand two thousand X two so, investment in subsidiary, yung 80,000 shares times 8. So, ito. And paid in cash. So, ito. 640. Ngayon, siyempre, nagkaroon ng ano, eh, reclassification. Eh. Nagkaroon ng remeasurement. Bakit? Meron kang previously held interest. Na kung saan, it was first classified as financial asset measured at fair value through profit or loss under PFRS 9. E ngayon, since nagkaroon na ng business combination, it is under IFRS 3 na or PFRS 3, hindi na PFRS 9. So, nagkaroon ng reclassification. But before you reclassify that, you must first remeasure it. So, paano naging mag-remeasure sure? Kasi tingnan mo, on December 31, 2001 siya, 5 pesos per share lang siya. Yeah? Pagdating ng acquisition date, naging 8 pesos per share na. So, nagkaroon ng increase. So, with that, and since it is measured at fair value through profit or loss, so yun, I-measure mo muna yung increase bago mo sa i-reclassify. So, FBNL, financial asset, ito siya, before reclassification. So, yun, 8 minus 5, kaya nagkaroon ng increase of 3 pesos per share, times 10,000 shares. So, nagkaroon ng unrealized gain, profit or loss, 30,000. Yeah, good yan. Ngayon, na-reclassify mo na siya. Napakita mo na siyang 80,000 pesos. Yeah? Kasi, yun na yung per value, si, per value through profit or loss siya eh. So, with that, you will now reclassify it under IFRS 3 or PFRS 3, business combination. Kaya, investment in subsidiary, additional 80,000, oh, pinos mo na yung FVPL financial asset 80,000. Yeah? Oh. Kaya, dito siya. Okay, no? Sweet, yeah, madali lang. Let's go to number 3. So, si number 3, on November 1, 2001, 2001, Entity A acquired all the assets and liabilities of Entity B for 1.8. So, yung consideration transferred. On this date, Entity B's assets and liabilities were valued at 2.6 and 900 respectively. The assets acquired include a trademark which was assigned a provisional amount of 300,000 because the fair value was not readily obtained at acquisition is a provisional amount to. Now, the trademark has an indefinite useful life on August 31, 2002. Entity A confirmed that the acquisition date value of the trademark was 200,000. So, hindi pa sila sure nung November 1. Ngayon, nung, Oct nung August 31, the next year, sure na sila na 200,000 lang yung value ng trademark, hindi 300,000. So, ang tinatanong, compute for the unadjusted and adjusted goodwill. So, basic, 1.8, wala tayong NCI for provisional. Yeah, kasi hindi pa tayo sure sa value ng trademark. So, 1.8. to wala tayong NCI, wala tayong PHI. Per value of net identifiable asset, given naman, 2.6 minus 900. So, yung goodwill natin as of provisional, as of November 1, 2001, is 100. Ngayon, noong August 31, nalaman na yung value ng, ng trademark. So, adjusted mo. Adjust mo na. So, 1.8, same consideration pa rin. Total, same 1.8. Ngayon, yung fair value of net, net identifiable asset mo, mababawasan na ng 100,000. Bakit? Kasi oh, the assets acquired include a trademark which was assigned a provisional amount of 300. Yun pala, pagka August 31, 200 lang pala. 200 lang pala. So, yun, bawas yun. Pa 1.7, naging 1.6 na lang yung FVNA mo. So, yung goodwill mo, tumaas, naging, 100, naging 200 na. So, yan na. Ang unadjusted goodwill, provision or 100, ang adjusted is 200. And provide the journal entry, yun, nagkaroon ng increase sa goodwill kasi pang 100, naging 200 na siya. And nagkaroon ng decrease, decrease sa 
value ni trademark kasi from being recorded as 300, 200 lang pala siya. So, yun. Let's go to number 4. So, number four. On January 1, 2001, NDTA acquired all the assets and liabilities of NDTB for 2.2. So, in consideration, XYZ's assets and liabilities have a value of 3.6 and 1.8. So, 3.6, 1.8, 1.8 yung kanyang FVNA, respectively. So, 2.2 yung consideration. So, let's go to the additional information. Entity A is the exclusive distributor of Entity B's products. The distributorship agreement has a remaining term of 5 years. Entity A yung ano ah, yung acquirer. So, uh, has a remaining term of 5 years. The contract does not have any cancellation clause. So, the distributorship contract has a fair value of 360,000. Kung saan yung 170 dyan, 170,000 yan is at market. So, walang problema dyan. However, the off-market component, ibig sabihin yung 190,000 out of the 360, kasi 170 lang yung at market, yung off-market component is unfavorable to Entity A, the acquirer. But favorable to Entity B, the acquiry. Excuse me po. Sarap ng durian. So, no assets or liabilities related to the contract were recognized in either of Entity A's or Entity B's books at the acquisition date. So, ang tanong, compute for the, uh, ang requirements pala, compute for the gain or loss on the settlement of the pre-existing relationship, provide a journal entry. And, letter B, compute for the goodwill. So, ano to? Pinapakita dito anong effect niya sa business combination. So, with that said, kita mo, before sila nag-combine, meron silang distributorship agreement. Na si A, si A, si Entity A lang yung mag-distribute ng products sa Entity B. Now, since nag-combine na silang dalawa, kasi business combination nga to, wala na yung distributorship kasi uh, agreement. Kasi si Entity A na mismo yung mag-distribute niyan. Kasi pag may ari niya na si, ano eh, si Entity B, hindi niya kailangan makipagkontrata pa kay Entity B. Kasi siya na yung nagmamayari kay Entity B. Yeah? So with that said, nag-end na yung distributorship agreement. Ngayon, siyempre, kawawa si Entity B. Oh, may langgam. Kasi, yung value ng, ano, ng distributorship contract, 360,000. Kung saan 170 is at market, so goods lang. Yung off market, unfavorable kay A, but favorable kay B, yung 190,000 off market. Ngayon, pag mawawala ng distributorship agreement, siyempre, kawawa si B. Bakit? Kasi nga, favorable sa kanyang off-market eh, in the amount of 190,000. So with that, kailangan niyang isettle ni A para goods kay B. Yeah? Kasi favorable kay B, 190,000 eh. Itas e, mawawala yan kasi magko-combine si A and B. Di ba? So, ganyan, kasi simple yung ano yan, rationalization. Hence, settlement loss, 360A minus the 170 at market. So, 190,000 yung off-market. Di yeah? Ito yung favorable kay B na mawawala sa kanya. So, ang gagawin, magkakaroon ng settlement loss. Yeah? So, ito, settlement loss, babayaran ni ACB, 190,000. Okay, goods. Yeah? Ngayon lang yan. So, compute for the goodwill. Consideration transferred, 2.2 million minus the 190K of market value. So, yun. 2.2 million, 1,0. Fair value of net asset, net asset identifiable. FVNA natin, 1.8. Goodwill, 210. So, yung 170 at market value is subsuming goodwill and not recognized as tangible asset because there is no reacquired right. O, kasi you already have that right before. Kinain mo na si B. So, let's go to number 5. Number 5, on January 1, 2001. <coughs> On January 1, 2001, <coughs> uh, Entity A acquires 100% interest in Entity B in exchange for Entity A's 10,000 shares with par value per share of 20 and fair value per share of 200. So, ito ang pinambayad ni Entity A sa shares ni Entity B is kanyang sariling shares. Nagkaroon ng equity, uh, equity transaction, di ba? Kung saan ang pinambayad ni Entity A is 10,000 shares 
na may par, va- par um, na may par value of 20 kung saan yung fair value is 200. So entity based net identifiable asset have a fair value of 1,920,000. So in addition to that, entity agrees to provide an additional payment to SOC. Uh, of 400,000 in entity bis 2001 profit if entity bis 2001 profit will exceed 3.6 million so nagkaroon ng contingent consideration dito in the amount of uh kung saan yung fair value noon is in the amount of 280,000 so yan ah pag nag-exceed ng 3.6 million may additional payments if ano nagagawin si Entity A in the amount of 400,000 and yung fair value niyan ngayon as of now is 280,000 so yan yung i-record mo provisionally so ang requirements natin how much is the goodwill recognized on acquisition date ngayon ito Entity B's 2,000 on profit is 3.8 million so nag-exceed ng 3.6 so now Entity A's pay Entity A pay now pays the additional 400k on January 14, 2000 So, provide the journal entries for D. On sa letter C naman, iba yung naging situation. Entity B's 2,000 on profit is 2.8. So, below the 3.6 day, uh, target. So, with that, provide the journal entry. So, ngayon, hanapin natin yung goodwill acquisition date. So, paano yan? Na? 10,000 shares times the fair, va- fair, value of tu- fair value of 200 plus the 280,000 consideration that is 2,280,000. Wala tayong NCI kasi 100% interest yan nung in ni A and wala rin tayong PHI previously held. So, ang total 2 million to 80 minus the fair value of net the FVNA natin. Yeah? And nandito naman, 120. So, ang goodwill, 360. Ngayon, yung requirement B requires us that nag, uh, yung profit ni Entity B during 2001 is 3.8. So, nag-exceed. Yan, ang target na 3.6. So, with that, babayaran na ni A yung kanyang contingent consideration the amount of 400,000. So, ano magiging journal entry dyan? Ito, unrealized loss. Bakit unrealized loss? Yung carrying amount ng contingent consideration na record mo is 280 lang. Pero, nung pagdating ng ano, ito, nung nalaman yung 3.8 at of the, as of the end of the day, yung profit, naging 400 na. So, nagkaroon ng increase in fair value of liability, 120,000. So, yan. Kaya nagkaroon ng unreal, unrealized loss, PNL, liability for contingent consideration, nag-increase from 280, naging 400 na. Kasi sure na kayo, di ba? Sure na sure bills na 400 talaga yung babayaran nyo. So, liability, ngayon, bayaran na. Kasi December 2, 2001 to, end of the year, nalaman yung profit, and babayaran nyo on January 14, 2002, O, oh, 400-400. Liability for continuing consideration, tanggal na yung liability na yan, debit, and yung cash credit kasi babayaran nyo na. Sa entity C or requirement C, dito naman iba. In, hindi na reach yung target na 3.6 million, 2.8 lang. So, with that, wala lang. Liability for uh, debit, liability as of December 2, 2001, kasi nalaman nyo na, na hindi na reach yung target. Yeah? Liability for contingent consideration, i-close mo na yung liability na yan. And gain on extinguishment of liability 280,000. Bakit sir? Kasi hindi na kayo magbayad ng cash. Uh, hindi yung bayad. Kasi nabayaran nyo na yun eh. Beforehand pa. So ganyan. Gain on extinguishment of liability. PNL. Kasi na already, it was already ano eh, paid beforehand pa lang. Na uh, record na siya. Dito kasi nagkaroon ng changes. So with that, let's proceed to the next one. Multiple choice over time. Mahaba kasi multiple choice. Eh. Pero basic lang yan to. Sa discussion din naman to eh. But here are the answers of the multiple choice. Hmm. Oh, dito lang yung answer yung multiple choice. Basic lang yun sila. Sa discussion naman yun. So let's proceed to Problem 6, multiple choice, pero computational na. So, yun. Kung may questions man kayo doon sa theories natin, sa true or false part two, uh, problem 1 and 2, and sa ito, problem 5, multiple choice theory, sa mga theory questions, don't hesitate to chat me sa Teams. Walang problema yan kung may questions kayo, kung may hindi kayo nag-gets or clarification. Anyway, problem 6, multiple choice, computational naman. 
So ito, use the following information for the next two question. Burns Co. issued 20,000 ordinary shares in exchange for all the outstanding shares of Sayin Co. on acquisition date. Sayin Co.'s net identifiable asset have a carrying amount of 4 million pero yung fair value is 2 million. So alam niyo na yung gagamitin dyan. The transaction increased Burns, uh, Burns the acquirer, Burns share premium by 400,000. However, walang goodwill na nag-result from, from this business combination. So, first question. How much is acquisition date? Fair value per share of the ordinary shares issued by Burns. So, magkano dahil yung fair value ng shares na pinambayad ni Burns ko yung 20,000. Paano malalaman? Basic. Ang sabi, walang goodwill. Yeah? Ang sabi, walang goodwill na na nag-result from the business combination. So, ayun. Walang goodwill. So, ito. Dito ka mag-start. And yung fair value ng yung FVNA natin, provided naman dito, yung 2 million. Yeah? So, 2 million, lagay mo dito. So, alam mo nang walang good will result. So, zero dapat ang mga dito. So, alam mong 2 million din dito. So, yan. Parang nag-work back ka lang. So, alam mong yung consideration, yung squeeze. Yeah? Consideration transferred is 2 million peso. And alam mo nang consideration transferred is 2 million peso for 20,000 shares. So, 2 million. Divided by 20,000 shares, that's 100 pesos per share. Okay, so letter D. Ang next question is, how much far value is far value per share of Burns ordinary shares? So, automatic ba na 100 yun? Hindi, kasi tingnan mo, meron kang share premium na nag-result from the transaction. No? The transaction increased Burns share premium of 400,000. So, meaning, out of that 2 million consideration, 400,000 dyan is share premium. Yung 1.6 is the share capital. So, with that, minus mo lang. 2 million minus the 400. So, 1.6 million yung share capital. So, 1.6 million divided by 20,000 shares na in-issue. So, ang tamang answer is yeah, 80,000. So, that is letter C. Uh, goods. Uh, 80,000, 80 pesos per share yung uh, per, uh, par value niya. Let's go to number 3. Sa number 3 naman, point ko. Uh, issued shares in exchange for all the outstanding shares of finger ko. <laughs> the business company, so si point ko ang ano, ang acquirer, si finger ko ang, <laughs> ang acquiree. So the business combination did not result to any goodwill. So wala rin goodwill dito. So the share exchange ratio was 2 is to 1. So, for every shares, di ba? Kasi ang nangyari dito, this equity exchange lang, di ba? Para ma-acquire ni point ko, yung share, yung, uh, para ma-acquire ni point ko si finger ko, di ba? Kailangan niya mag-issue ng shares. So, nagkaroon ng equity exchange lang, di ba? So, yung share exchange na to, ratio is 2 is to 1. So, meaning, for each share na meron si finger ko, kailangan mag-issue ng dalawang shares ni point ko. Ulitin natin, 2 is to 1. For each share na meron si finger ko, kailangan mag-issue ni point ko ng dalawang shares. Kaya nga, 2 is to 1. 2 shares para pa point ko for every 1 share ni finger ko. Yeah. Finger share capital has a carrying amount of 40,000. The par value per share is 4. Yeah. So, finger, alam mo na. Yeah. Kasi 40,000 na yung ano, shares, share capital. Tapos yung par value di ba, ng per share ni finger is 4 peso. So, divide mo lang yung sa 40 para sa yung 40k sa 4. Alam mo na kung ilang shares na meron. Di ba? Outstanding. So, fingers not identifiable asset as a carrying amount or have a carrying amount of 400,000 and a fair value of 800,000. So, yun. Net identifiable asset, 400, fair value. So, 800 gagamitin niya dito. So, point share have a fair value of per share of 10 pesos. Ito naman point si acquirer. How much is the acquisition date for value per share of point shares. So, with that, diba, nasabi tin kanina, yung 2 is to 1 ratio. And, since sinabi dito, si Finger, yung acquiry, meron siyang share capital, 40k, par value per share, 4. So, alam mo, divide mo lang yan. Yeah? So, alam mo, 10k yung kanyang shares. And since 2 is to 1, for each share na meron si Finger ko, si point ko mag issue ng dalawa. So, kaya, yung number of shares issued by point is 20K. 
Ya. So ang pinapahanap sa atin, how much is the acquisition date for value of uh, per share of point share? So yun. So hanapin mo muna yung consideration transferred kasi dyan mo madidivide, di ba? So yun. Goodwill. Wala tayong goodwill. Sinabi o, oh, di not result into goodwill. So yun. So work, work back ring, work up. So 800k. Yung fair value ng FBNA natin. So, since walang goodwill, 800 yan dito. Wala tayong PHI, wala tayong NCI. Kasi all the outstanding. So, 800. Squeeze. So, 800 yung consideration transferred. Then, yung initiung shares ni point ko is 20K. So, yun. 800 divided by 20. So, yung fair value per share ni point ko as of the acquisition date is 40k ah uh, is 40 so that is letter b so let's go to number four so number four number four so on january 1 2001 uh si overco Acquired 10,000 out of the 100,000 outstanding shares of Cisco for 30,000. Transaction cost on the acquisition amounted to 2,000 pesos. So, expense yan. Overco, si acquirer, classified the shares as held for trading. So, parang familiar to si isang problem, di ba? The shares were trading at 5 pesos per share at 5 pesos on December 2001. And on July 1, 2002, the next year, Overco acquired additional 50,000 shares of Cisco at 7 pesos per share. So, that is an ste a step acquisition. Uh, yung 7 pesos per share, yung quoted price on that date, so yung gagamitin. So, the outstanding shares of Cisco remained at 100,000. So, 10K plus 50K shares, so 60% yung ownership ni Overco. So, si Cisco, net identifiable assets have a fair value of 665 100,000 as of this date. So, Overco elected to measure NCI using the proportional share method. How much is the goodwill? So, similar siya dito sa problem ito, di ba? Saan na yun? Siya problem yun. Uh, yung problem yun similar. Step acquisition. Step acquisition. Ito. Ba similar siya dito sa number 2. So with that. Uh, Saan mo tayo number? Number 4 na. Number 4. So how much is the goodwill? So basic consideration transfer 50k. At 7 pesos per share. Yeah. Non-controlling interest tayo, meron tayong 40%. Bakit? 10,000 yung previously held, nag-additional ng 50K out of the 100K, so 60,000 shares. Ang pagmamayari ni Overco, the acquirer, kay Cisco, the acquiry, so 60,000 60, over 100, 60%, so 40% dyan is NCI. So since proportionate share naman yung gagamitin, so 665 times 40%, that is 266. Previously held interest, meron tayong 10,000k before, times mo sa 7 ngayon. Okay, 70,000. Kita nyo dito. Hmm. So, kasi goodwill lang pinapahanap. Hindi yung measurement and reclassification. So, hindi na pinadaan dito. Yeah, goodwill lang pinapahanap. So, may total na kayo. FBNA natin. Okay, 21,000 goodwill letter C. And lastly, number 5. Number 5, on July 1, 2001, SUB Co. acquired all the identifiable assets and assume all the liabilities of Pickup Incorporation. Sa SUB ang, ang acquirer, Pickup ang acquiry. For 800,000, so yan yung consideration. So at acquisition date, Pickups. Pickups, identifiable assets and liabilities have a fair value of 1.2 and 300. So, 900 yung FBNA natin sa start. So, additional information. Si Pickup has an unrecognized intangible asset for secret processes. Now, since, ano siya? 
So, nire-record siya kasi identifiable siya. Eh, Shubiko assigned a provisional amount of 200,000 for this asset because its fair value is not readily determinable on acquisition date. So, provisional amount lang 200. Ngayon, itong provisional amount is included in the total valuation valuation of the assets acquired. So, kasama sa dito. Sa so, 1.2. So, SUB amortized the intangible assets over an estimated useful life of 10 years using the straight line method. So, yan yung nangyari nung July 1, 2001. Pagka next year, nung February 1, 2002, an independent consultant determined that the particular or the subjected intangible asset for value on acquisition date was yung totoo, 20,000 lang pala and may useful life na 4 years. So, hindi 200,000 na may useful life of 10 years, but rather yung tama is 20,000 na may useful life of 4 years. So, that, kakaroon na nga dyan, adjustments, di ba? So, ang unang tanong, or ang question, the entity to restate the goodwill includes which of the following? So, alamin mo muna yung provisional goodwill, yung unadjusted. Then, alamin mo na yung adjusted goodwill para malaman mo magkano yung magiging adjustment, di ba? So, with that consideration transferred, 800. Wala tayong NCI, wala tayong uh, previously held interest. Kasi uh, entire acquisition yan eh. Asset acquisition to, yun. Uh, asset acquisition, wala tayong PHI. So, total 800-800. Sa FBNA natin, di ba, ito yung sa provisional, yung sa adjusted, yung sa acquisition date. 1.2 minus 300, so 900 yan. So, yung goodwill natin or the negative goodwill or the gain on bargain purchase is negat- is 100,000. Negative goodwill is uh, ano, negative 100,000 or yung gain on bargain purchase natin is in the amount of 100,000. Ngayon, adjusted na. Punta na siya adjusted. 800, yan. Goods pa rin. 800 total. Kaso, instead of the original 900,000, 720 na lang. Bakit? Kasi from being 200,000, naging 20,000 na lang yung kanyang totoong value yung kanyang value, so that is a decrease of 180,000. So, kaya 1, 720 na lang. Yeah? So, dito, provision amount plus the 120K for value. Yeah? Okay. So, kaya, from being a negative goodwill, naging positive goodwill na siya in the amount of 80,000. So, yan, magkakaroon ng adjustment. So, on February 1, 2002, nung nalaman na yung totoong value ng, ano, ng intangible asset na to, goodwill, nagkaroon na increase of 80,000 debit, intangible asset, di ba, nag-decrease from being 200, naging 20,000 lang yung value niya, so credit of 180. Ngayon itong retained earnings, saan niyang galing? Kasi itong negative goodwill, or yung gain on bargain purchase, nire-recognize yan sa profit or loss for the year. Yan, nire-recognize yan sa profit or loss for the year. E saan mo kinuklose ang profit or loss mo? Di ba sa retained earnings? So, since retained earnings na siya nakalagay, and since nagkaroon ng adjustment, yung retained earnings na yung i-adjust mo. Kaya dito, debit retained earnings 100, yeah, naging nabawasan yung retained earnings mo by 100. Yeah? Kasi yung ganun bagin purchase, gain siya, di ba? O, pag i-cross mo yung gain, dagdag yan sa retained earnings mo. E eh, since wala pala talagang gain, kasi nga, iba yung value ng, ano, ng intangible asset. So, kukunin mo from the retained earnings yung gain na yon Kasi wala talagang gain. So, goodwill, yon So, basic accounting na yan. So, with that, mayroon pa yung depreciation. Bakit? Kasi yung original na ginagawa mo since July 1, 2001 is 200,000 divided by 10 years. Yan? Yeah? Pero yung totoo palang dapat ginagawa is 20,000 divided by 4 years. So with that, amortization recognition 2,001, di ba? Sabi natin, 200,000 divided by 10 years. Pero since July 1 to nag-start, so 6 over 10 na lang, so 10,000. Which should be the correct amortization ng 2,001 is 20,000 divided by 4 years times 6 over 12 for the remaining 6 months. So 2,5 dapat. So yung excess amortization mo for 2,001 is... 10,000 minus 2,500, yung 10,000 yung nirecord mo, 2,500 yung dapat na nirecord mo, so yung excess na ginawa mo is 7,500. Now, tanong ko ulit, saan kinoclose? Yeah? Ang amortization expense, di ba? Sa retained earnings, kasi sa profit or loss ratio siya. Ah, sa income statement natin siya, di ba? Kinoclose yan sa 
retained earnings. Now, since expense to, so bawas yan sa retained earnings. Eh, yun pala, nasobrahan ka sa pag-expense. So, ibabalik mo yan sa retained earnings. So, yun. Kaya nag-debit, nag-credit si retained earnings dito. Okay, may report amortization. Nasobrahan ka sa pag-record. Yeah. So, yan. So, that is the discussion for business combination part 2. Uh, reminder lang, after ng magdolong quiz tayo, sa BAPE 7, accounting for business combination, first long quiz, after ng discussion ng uh, business combination part 3. Tapusin mo natin yung business combination bago tayo mag long quiz. With that said, bye-bye. Love you. The joke lang, di pala na-reveal yung correct answer. <laughs> Napesa ganyan record. So, the correct answer is letter C, debit, retained earnings, 100,000. Entry to restate the goodwill includes which of the following? Restate the goodwill, ito yun, no? Diba? Oh, retained earnings, which of the following? Debit goodwill, ano naman yan? Debit to intangible, hindi naman. Yeah, credit to goodwill, hindi naman. Oh, ito yan. So, yan, babay, let love you.